Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to The Anxious Truth. This is podcast episode number 185. Tonight, we're talking about happiness and joy and when you might reasonably be able to expect those things to come back and what that process looks like during recovery. Because I know many of you are asking the question, why can't I feel happy? Why can't I experience joy? Is it ever going to come back? That's what we're going to talk about in this episode. So I am Drew Linsalata, creator and host of The Anxious Truth. And if you are new here, if this is your first episode, this podcast is all about everything anxiety and anxiety recovery. So if you're dealing with panic attacks, panic disorder, agoraphobia, OCD, health anxiety, social anxiety, this is the place. We got you covered here. And if you are a returning listener and you've been around for a while, thank you. I appreciate your continued support. I'm glad you're here too. Before we get going with today's episode, I just want to remind you that this episode of The Anxious Truth is brought to you by me because this is more than just a podcast. There's a bunch of other stuff that goes with it, including these three books that are up over my left shoulder. If you're watching the on video, uh, I have written three books on anxiety and anxiety recovery. And by all accounts, the many, many thousands of people who read them all seem to love them and feel that they are very useful. So if you'd like to know more about the books I have written and you don't know about them already, you can head on over to my website at theanxioustruth.com and check them out. If you have one or more of those books and you are digging them and you haven't done this, Maybe take a minute and write me a review on Amazon because it really helps me out. And I appreciate that. Thank you all. So let's get into this episode. We're going to talk about happiness and joy. And when can I feel happy again? I can't feel happy. When is that going to come back for me? And I understand that because I was in the grips of that too. So when I was in the midst of the worst of my anxiety, uh, way back in maybe 2007, like that time, 2006, 2007, 2008, uh, I was working with a therapist for a little while. I loved her. She was so tremendously helpful for me. Uh, I, sh I owe her a debt I will never be able to repay. And uh, I want to tell you a little bit of a story to illustrate how I experienced this problem and this question of why can't I feel happy. So I was in a session with my therapist one day, and this was a thing that, that had been really stalking me, this problem of not being able to feel happy. Uh, and I brought it up to her. And, and, you know, I said, listen, I, I have a problem here because aside from everything else that's going on, I seem to have lost the ability to be happy. I can't feel happy. I cannot experience joy. And she said, okay, you know, what, tell me more. I said, I look at my kids and I know how I should feel, but I can't feel that way. Like something is wrong. Like, like a switch has been turned off. And I look at my family and I look at, at nature and I look at things that are supposed to make me happy. And I can't feel that. I cannot feel happiness. I cannot feel joy. So this is freaking me out. And it really was. A, I don't mean to make light of it. It was really, really weighing on me in a big way. I thought that I was broken. I thought that there was really something wrong and that somehow this anxiety had turned off a switch and I wasn't sure if the happy switch was ever going to turn back on. So she, like I said, she was wonderful. And she said, okay, I get it. You, you're clearly in distress over this, which I was. Now I could feel all the other emotions because I was starting to get a little choked up in her, in her office talking about that because I truly felt that I was broken. She said, okay, so let's work this through. <clears throat> she said, um, tell me how you got here today. And I'm like, she really like threw me on that one. When she asked that, excuse me, I had a cough. Uh, she asked, tell me how you got here today. And I said, oh, okay, uh, what has this got to do with any? She goes, just tell me how you got to my office today. I said, I, I drove here like I always do. Where is this going? And she said, okay, tell me three things that you like about the car that you drove here today to see me. And, I, and she must have seen the look on my face because, like, I did not in any way understand why we were having this particular conversation. It made no sense to me. Like, I was in trouble, and she was asking me about my car, which was the last thing on my mind. And she said, just go with it. Just give me three things. Give me the first three things that pop in off your head that you like about the car that you drove here. And it was in the middle of the winter. It was a pretty cold winter that year. And I said, I don't know. The seats have heat. I have heated seats. That was nice. Uh, and she said, okay, it's really cold out, right? I'm like, yeah, it's really cold. She goes, and the seats are heat. So keep, uh, the seats have heat. So it keeps you warm. I said, yes, I like the heated seats. And again, I, I remember I was getting a little bit frustrated. And I'm like, oh, yes, I like the seat. I, where is this going? And she said, you got in your car on a cold day and you turned on the, the heat in the seats and it made you feel warm and you like that. I said, yes, I like that. And she goes, that's happiness. And I, I remember just sitting back, I was sitting on her sofa. I know it's stereotypical, you're on the therapist's sofa, but I was sitting on the sofa, I wasn't laying on the sofa. And I just sat back and I looked at her and I'm like, what? And she said, that's happiness. Like you were happy because your butt was warm. And she made a little joke and we chuckled a little bit. I said, that's happy? And she said, what do you think happy is? And, I, and honestly, she kind of backed me into a corner there and she made me confront my expectations, which were a little bit distorted. I said, 
well, you know, like I'm looking at my kids, I'm looking at my, my girls, my daughters, and like I should be experiencing these weight, the joy, like joy, just happiness. And she goes, yeah, I know. I know what you think you should be experiencing, but, you know, that's not the only form of happy, you know. And I'm like, holy cow, you're right. She blew my mind. She literally blew my mind in that moment. And it was such a turning point for me in terms of that, that particular problem of being worried about my emotions and not being able to feel joy and, and things like that because that was really pressing on me. So she said, let's finish this exercise. I want you to make a list of anything that makes you happy. I don't care if you write it on an index card or a piece of paper or you keep it on my phone or whatever it was. It doesn't matter. And I did. I was, I was keeping it on my phone. I had the, the original iPhone back then, by the way. So, uh, and yes, I had the notes. You know, I was keeping a note on the iPhone. And we wrote down five or six things that were silly like that. I, I don't know. I like pizza. Like, you know, I like the, the seeds in my car. I like classic rock music. And she said, okay, so when you feel that you are unable to experience happiness, one thing that you can do sometimes will be to just go to that list. Just use the list. Look at the list for a second and think, oh, yeah, those things do bring me enjoyment. Enjoyment, enjoyment is a form of happiness. And she explained to me that happiness exists on a spectrum and that the default state for human beings is not nirvana. Like our, if you're watching on video, I got my hands way up here. Like our happiness, our default state for happy is not at the super level 10 happy. It's just not. And I had lost sight of that. So I often talk about anxiety being a great magnifier and distorter, right? And distorts things, it twists things, it magnifies things. And yes, that's exactly what my anxiety was doing for me. It had twisted and distorted and like irrationalized my view of what happiness was. I expected happiness to be this spiritual experience when in reality, was, we can have those experiences as human beings, certainly, and we do in our lives from time to time. But that's not the default state of happiness. And that's not the only form of happiness. So my therapist and that they really, really helped me put that into perspective. Now I still struggled with it. Because you can't just reason with an anxious mind, but it did help me a lot to understand that nirvana like extreme unbridled joy, even when like looking at our children or our partners or whatever, the glory of nature is not guaranteed, nor is it to be expected, nor is it the default for people. So if you are in a situation and that lesson has stuck with me to this day, and by the way, that list was on every phone I've ever owned since then, including the one I have right now. I'm never going to delete that list. I never look at it anymore, but it's very meaningful to me. So I hang on to it. And that might be an exercise that you want to try. It was really helpful for me Give it a shot. It might help you. It's just a reminder. So if you are in that situation where you are feeling that you cannot conjure up joy, and I hear the word joy a lot with this question. I cannot experience joy. There's no joy in my life. I can't be joyful. Or sometimes it's expressed as I can't, I can't find gratitude. I can't be grateful. I can't feel happiness. I cannot conjure happiness, gratitude, gratefulness, joy. I can't, none of those things. And I, I have to remind people all the time, well, you know, that's not the default state for a human being. A default state for, the, for a human being is just neutral. Like most of the time, if you think about a time that you were not in an anxious state, or you were not dealing with these anxiety problems, you most of the time were neutral. You actually didn't have an opinion about how you felt because how you felt was not the most important thing in the room all the time like it might be for you now. So right now, how you feel is the most important thing in the room all the time right? You're constantly judging it and you're constantly draw, striving to not feel bad. And you think that the opposite of feeling bad is feeling joyful, but it's not. The opposite of feeling bad is not knowing how you feel. To be totally honest with you, as somebody who has gone down the recovery path and is now on the other side of this, and has had the privilege of talking to so many people who have who've gone through this, the consensus is the opposite of feeling bad is not feeling great. The opposite of feeling bad is feeling contented or just feeling neutral, or not actually even noticing. So what I want you to consider here is that you are judging this based on that black and white sort of thinking, I am either feeling terribly because of my anxiety and fear, or I will be happy. But in reality, that should really be, I am either going to pay very close attention to how I feel all the time, or I'm not going to pay attention to how I feel. Those are really the two opposite ends here. It's not sadness, despair, pain, anxiety, fear, or joy and nirvana and happiness on the other side, you know, unbridled gratitude, the two, the two ends of the spectrum that we are really working with is I care about how I feel all the time. And I don't really care how I feel most of the time. So the process of regaining that ability to feel happiness and joy, number one would come incrementally, 
You have to start allowing those little things like my stupid seat heaters in my old car that I had back then. That was just the first step toward happiness for me to realize, oh, enjoying the seats is actually a form of happiness. So there are moments. I know you have moments in your day. Something just happened. I don't know what. Uh, we had a little power glitch. Okay. Uh, sorry about that. Anyway, um, so there are moments in your day when either you forget how you feel or you have little things here and there. You enjoy your cup of coffee or your a cupcake or, or you giggle with your kid. Something happens during the day that puts you into that sort of neutral state, not super joyful state, just a neutral state where you're no longer worried about how you feel for that one minute, 10 minutes, 15 minutes. That's happy. That is really happy. That's what we're looking for here. And as we go down the recovery process and we begin to focus less and less on how we feel all the time, we become more and more ambivalent or unaware or just not caring, unconcerned, contented with how we feel. And then you will start to make space for those feelings of joy and happiness will come back. So yes, I can feel those things now. I can't instantly conjure them because nobody really can. And sometimes that's a little bit of a dangerous message that we hear, you know, sort of in the toxic positivity and the online mental health community, the healing community, as if somehow we could just decide to be grateful and feel, feel joy and, and just and happiness. We cannot choose to feel those things. We can feel those things. We cannot demand them. So right now you are demanding a thing that even recovered people don't get to demand all the time. And you're kind of shooting at the wrong target. So first, you will begin to just not care how you feel. And you'll start to move toward that neutral, contented state. And that is really our natural state. And once you get there, you're, and then along the way, you're starting with these tiny glimpses of happiness. We might just call them enjoyment. A quick smile, an acknowledgement of something that is you like. Hey, that's cool. I enjoy that. That is a form of happiness. So we look for those things while we are losing our fixation with how we feel all the time. And as we are less and less fixated on how we feel, oh my God, I feel so anxious, my anxiety, I feel anxious, this is terrible, it's a nightmare, this is the worst, I can't get out of this. As that begins to go away, we focus less and less on how we feel and we make a little bit more room for the emergence of those feelings of joy and gratitude and happiness like you want so desperately, they will be able to poke back through again. Right now, all of the CPU cycles in your head, all of the processing power is focused directly on how do I feel? This is terrible. This is awful. This is terrible. I must recover. How do I recover? Am I doing it right? And when am I going to get better? There's no cycles left. There's no room for nirvana. There's no room for joy. There's no room for those that type of happiness that you're hoping, that you're chasing right now. You're chasing it. But even recovered people that aren't anxious anymore don't get to chase that. We can chase it, but we, don't, we never catch it. You know, it can come naturally when we allow it, but we, we don't get to get it either. I don't get to instantly feel joy in nirvana. I just don't, uh, nor do most other people. That's not a default, normal default state for a human being. So to answer your question and sort of wrap this up a little bit, when you think that you will be unable to feel joy and happiness, what I would tell you to remember is that right now, all you care about is how you feel. And that, that anxiety state, the anxious state, that fear state is twisting and distorting your perception of what, what joy and happiness is supposed to be. You've forgotten that that's not the default state. And really, you just need to stop for a second, adjust that and say, you know what, I, there are still things that for a moment here and there, I can experience tiny glimpses of contentment or something that I just like. And that's a form of happiness. And as I become less obsessed with how I feel, I will be able to experience that thing that I want so badly, it will come back. But for now, I just need to shoot for neutral. So we're not, it's, you know, you're needing nirvana, but you really need to learn to navigate neutral. Let me do alliteration here on the letter N, but that's really what this is all about. You don't need nirvana. You need to navigate to neutral. That's really what we need right now. And that's the answer to your question. And when you get to neutral, you start to get to that contented state, then the happiness and the joy that you want so badly will begin to come back in its normal state when it's warranted in your life. Some days will be very joyful. Some days will just be neutral. Some days you'll be sad. You'll be in a bad mood. Some days you'll be angry. That's the way human beings are. So don't feel afraid. I can't tell you to not feel afraid. You will feel afraid. I felt afraid. But don't get stuck on the idea that you've lost the ability to be happy. No, right now you're just preoccupied with this other thing, which is how you feel and how afraid you are all the time. But that doesn't mean you can't feel happy. You will. Trust me, you'll get there. 
but that's what the process looks like. It's a march toward neutral, which then opens up space for what you're really hoping to get. But along the way, recognize these little bits of happiness in different forms that really do exist at least a few times in every day if you really look at them. Maybe make a list like my therapist made me do. It was actually very helpful. I will, I'm eternally grateful for that exercise. And like I said, I carry that list around to this day. So will you be able to feel joy and happiness again? Yeah, you will. Are you feeling happiness now? You are, just not in the form that you are demanding, but we never get to demand that anyway, no matter what our state. So there you go. There's about 15 minutes or so on joy and happiness. I hope that makes you at least feel a little better. I uh, hope that it gives you a little bit of a direction, a little bit of hope on this. You're not broken if you're not feeling joyful and happy right now, I promise. So that is today's podcast episode. Episode 185 in the books. So I'm going to play you out as always. This is Afterglow by my friend Ben Drake. You can find Ben online and his music at bendrakemusic.com. Tell him I said hello if you go over there and you see him. If he's hanging out on his website. Nobody hangs out on their website. Anyway, check out Ben's music. He's a good guy. Uh, also, I'm going to ask the same favor that I always do. If you are listening to this podcast on iTunes or on some platform that lets you rate or review the podcast, five-star rating is great. Leave a little review. If you're watching on YouTube, it sure would be good for you to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. Just saying, it really helps. Anyway, guys, thanks for coming by and spending your time. As always, we'll be back next week with another episode like we always are. Don't know what it's going to be, but we'll be here. And remember... This is the way. Now in the city and you're living fast. No looking back or dwelling on the past. You know you'll never get another chance. So go and live your life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Push through the pressure like an